Argonne National Laboratory's experience in the fast reactor field has indicated the value of a readily available, reproducible source of neutrons in a wide range of flux levels and flux spectra. The laboratory's Idaho division at the Atomic Energy Commission's National Reactor Testing Station has designed and built the Argonne Fast Source Reactor to meet this need. The reactor achieved criticality in October 1959. Since this reactor was designed as a laboratory source of neutrons, it does not require the flexibility and loading and operation found in most experimental reactors. But it does have real flexibility for our research purposes. Briefly, the reactor consists of a core of about 20 kilograms of highly enriched metallic uranium contained in three nickel cans about four and one half inches in diameter and with a combined height of four and one quarter inches. The critical mass for this core was reached by the stepwise insertion of enriched uranium disks in the lower core section. These disks were then canned into a single unit. The core is positioned at the center of a full density depleted uranium blanket, eight inches thick. The cavity around the core is lined with stainless steel to prevent oxidation. Two methods of control are used. The more effective consists of lowering a third of the core and that portion of the blanket under it by means of a pneumatic cylinder. The speed of assembly for the final six inches is controlled by forcing the plug drive to follow an electrically driven jack screw. The second method is that of modifying the effectiveness of the blanket by insertion and removal of depleted uranium rods. Two two-inch diameter safety rods serve as the fastest means of reducing reactivity. Similar rods, operated by a manual micrometer adjustment underneath the reactor, serve as shim rods. A one-inch diameter control rod is used to make the fine adjustment of reactivity. All control drives are located in the pit beneath the reactor and are operated from the control console. The cooling system of the reactor is connected to the suction side of a positive displacement blower. Air is drawn through the 1 16th inch annular passage between the core and blanket to remove heat. Circulating cooling air at a negative pressure inhibits the escape of radioactivity to the work area. A four by four by six foot graphite thermal column extends outward from the reactor. Seven holes, three in the concrete shield and four extending into the thermal column except the chambers for operating instrumentation. The entire assembly is surrounded by a high density concrete shield four and one half feet thick. This reactor was designed for sustained operation at a power level of 1000 watts. Its flux spectra range from fission to thermal. A fast neutron flux as high as five times 10 to the 11th and a thermal neutron flux as high as two times 10 to the eighth. A one-half inch glory hole passes through the approximate center of the core, providing access to the hardest spectrum and highest flux of the reactor. Where it passes through the core, the hole is lined with a five mil thick nickel tube, welded at the ends to the nickel can. A tube of zirconium isolates the nickel liner from the U-235 to minimize the danger of forming a uranium nickel eutectic alloy in the event of an excursion. 
a two and one quarter inch hole extending to within one half inch of the inner surface of the blanket provides a neutron beam to be utilized in the development of spectrometric equipment. A one and one sixteenth inch grazing hole passes completely through the blanket for experimental flexibility. Two horizontal holes approximately two and one half inches in diameter pass through the thermal column for evaluating counters in a thermal flux. The operating philosophy contemplates a reactor that, for normal operation, has available to the operator at the control console a total excess reactivity of only 60 in hours. Any additional reactivity which might be needed for or accrue from special experiments is under stringent administrative control through key locks on all features which significantly affect reactivity. For example, the glory hole. This reactor as a source of neutrons will be used for a variety of tasks. Sample beams can be obtained to aid in the development of neutron spectrometers. Oils can be irradiated in the top of the lower core section to aid in the development of radiochemical techniques and methods for the measurement of neutron spectra using spectral indices. The reactor neutrons can be used in the development of new detection devices as well as routine checks of operational chambers for damage in shipment or deterioration in storage. Complex instrumentation for established experiments can be advantageously checked out prior to use in one of the operating reactors. These are some of the specific applications which are now in view. Other avenues of experimentation will be suggested as the capabilities of the machine and crew are enhanced by experience. The argon fast source reactor is a laboratory tool, not an experimental reactor. Operation is as simple and undemanding as possible, permitting the main scientific effort to be directed toward the research task at hand.